so, okay, the thing with the Silver Dragon is another example, in a way like the first one, the writing isn't progressing smoothly. The style itself could work within a really strong context. It's a little bit more kind of, you know, putting it all out there, uh, you know, hard in the sleeve kind of thing, very emotionally, like, unreserved kind of writing. That can work, like romance as an example, is a genre where you'll often have writing like that more than in some other genres. Um, but you can't have something like, um, she's on the dragon, it's diving, the war was over but Daxon was gone and nothing would bring her husband back. She stopped along the way and buried him in a meadow beneath the great tree. Who, well, where has he been? Is the husband on the dragon with her? Did she escape the, um, you know, diving dragon and then the husband's body was just waiting by where it was buried and she just stopped there and buried him? Um... Now, I'm coming in on page three, according to what's here, unless... Oh, no, that's, th th that's the just the numbering the page. Oh, okay. Uh, this is the beginning okay, of the Okay, okay. So, um, so, it's just, there's no real stage setting. Mm. You don't know where she is. It appears that she's in a fight. There's the body that comes out, and you don't know where the body is. So, the writing could be okay, but there's definitely the need to stop and slow down a bit. Um, hmm. One thing writers will do sometimes, and I think this is one reason why... I don't like dialogue-heavy books. This page isn't, but it reminds me of that in a way that the disadvantage of writing really heavy on dialogue is that you also need to give visual clues and paint pictures to a reader to mm. some extent. And that is the big thing here that is missing is a real strong sense of visualization. Right. I can't actually see any of the things that are going on. Right. Or at least not in a specific sense. Right. She's on a dragon, she's diving. But I don't have any other cueing beyond right. that. Okay. Um, does it start with enough of a bang? Would you say, or like, I mean, if this is the first chapter, is she grabbing your attention enough? Well, so. The first sentence, the silver dragon circled high in the sky above the lightning plains. There's nothing wrong with that sentence, but even after finding out she tucked her wings into her side and dove, I don't know if she is tucking in her wings meaning literally that she has wings and she is tucking them in, or if she is tucking in the wings of the silver dragon, or if she is riding another dragon and is trying to escape the silver dragon that is introduced in the first sentence. Right. So... 
Could a book start with this first sentence? Totally. The question is what you tell me in the next sentences after that. Okay, no, that makes sense. Um, okay, great. Okay, so the one here, um, there's a sign of a voice which I like. There, so the second sentence, it should be phase the spirit had said. There's punctuation that's missing. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe it's just a comma and it should be phase, comma, the spirit had said. But without the punctuation, you give me a sentence that is really awkward. Hmm. Right. The next paragraph, so getting back to what I said earlier about a progression, the stuff about the phase in the first, like, paragraph doesn't seem to have any payoff in the second paragraph. Like, who are the phase? What are the phase? I'm assuming because I've read a lot of fantasy novels that you're meaning fairies of some sort, but I just don't know. It's really, um... So, it's almost like he hinted at something, but didn't deliver on it. Doesn't deliver on it in the second paragraph. If he would have been, ex imagine like he would have um, been more explicit hanging like a lantern on it, would that have been acceptable? But he didn't, like, for instance, he said, like, blah, 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 the phase, blah, blah, But he didn't have time to think about that right now. And then he goes on. I don't know. It, it's just that all in all, there's just less of a flow here than with a lot of the other, with the things I've read so far. There are a lot of different actions that are taking place. But I'm not getting a good sense on how it all connects up. So maybe like the, the visual context and the motives? It needs, as I said, the, it's action, but it isn't... It seems to be circling instead of going forward. Okay. Do have you do you see that very often in novels? Like kind of action, kind of circling, but not going. Well. You see a lot of things. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so. I imagine it happens like. So it's just it, it it it's going in circles, and I don't know that I've gotten any further in Nalada's story at the end of these paragraphs than I am at the beginning of it. Mm, right. Okay. Um, what, what would be like a thing that, just extrapolating, what would be a thing that would make you feel like you had gotten farther in the plot? Like, I mean, you can make up a plot. Like, can I you know, imagine? It's, it's, again, it's, a, it's just, you want to ha have forward movement, and I really didn't feel that here. So, like, what does forward movement look like? Maybe it's like, um, <laughs> conflict isn't, like, there's no conflict in the process of being resolved. I mean, I wonder. Well, that would be part of it. But that's, as I said, that's what plotting is about, though. It's giving... Plotting is a clothesline that you hang things on. Mm. And without a plot to hang things on, 
you're just not, you know, mm. you're not getting anywhere. So, like, action needs to take place in context of the overall plot. Yes. God, no, that makes perfect sense. So, on this one, there's a great opening paragraph. Okay, Mara thought to herself, it's nothing to be scared of. Just keep looking forward. Smile. And above all, don't draw attention to yourself. Don't draw attention yet anyways. It's a very solid opening paragraph. There's a voice there. You're kind of taken into Mara instantly. I don't know if I would have the don't draw attention to yourself, don't draw attention yet anyways. If you need to say that, you can certainly say it quicker. Even if it's just three words quicker, you want to be in the business of making every word count. So I would ask, you know, and above all, don't draw attention to yourself. Not right now. As an example, would be two words quicker, but it at least doesn't mm -hmm. repeat the don't draw attention yet anyways. Right. It adds without repeating, and it saves two words. The problem here is that after that, and after a second paragraph that is kind of okay but falls off, she spends all of this time talking about the building was absolutely enormous, hundreds of pillars, illimitable distance, spider-like veins of burnished copper mesh, I want to know from the first paragraph why Mara doesn't draw attention to herself, doesn't mm -hmm. want to draw attention to herself, and you are now completely ignoring that. Mm. Right. Now, I also said that you need to paint pictures, but this isn't the time or place for it. You need to Build on what you've told us and get down to the brass tacks of explaining the situation Mara is in where she doesn't want to draw attention to herself. And that doesn't exclude giving visual cueing mm -hmm. because you can take a little bit of time to say it would be hard to draw attention to, you'd think it would be hard to draw attention to yourself in a room with, um, you know, um, where the ceiling stretched upwards for an illimitable distance, where the assembly hall could hold her and, you know, 300,000 of her fellow 17-year-olds. But if there was a way to do it, Mara knew she could find it. You know, so that's an example of a way where you can offer some visuals, describe the situation, but not make the reader feel like you're detouring from your really good first paragraph. Right. So kind of like they should really be doing multiple things at once. Yeah, a good writer is able to do things where you, you know, where you provide the visuals that give the context, the direct and immediate context to where Mara finds herself, but not stop for, um, you know, 50 <laughs> words, 100 words, that don't go anywhere beyond that good opening paragraph. Right. So there's 
Okay, so like in lots of ways, lack of progression, but yeah, and because and of then she detours to talking about some other small girl, you know, um, they all look the same, you know, it's just. What is it with Mara? Tell me more about this. Okay. Okay, then, so in this one here, there's a, some mix of good and bad in this. It's first person, I'm interested by the character. It seems like a really interesting character who might like to get no so he's in the guard he has this post other people wouldn't ask for there's a mission there's a lot of stuff here that I'm interested in getting to find out more of hmm. at the same time um Overlooking the slum-like sidings, would slum-like be one word in this context? I think so. Dangerous during the day, suicide by night, especially for the watch. Um, now I don't know if you need to make slum like one or two words, you could probably just cut out both and say overlooking the sightings. Dangerous during the day, suicide by night, especially for the watch. Or you could leave out especially for the watch. I'm not sure that piece of information needs to be given right at that particular time. A storm was coming, not tonight, but soon. Tonight the air was crisp and clear, the moon... Well, if the storm isn't coming right now, and if it isn't directly relevant to what is about to happen, then leave it out. A storm is always coming. You know, wherever you are, there's always a storm coming. Maybe it's next week, or maybe the monsoon season begins in three months. There's always a storm coming. A chill wind blew in from the east, whipping strands of hair. I cover the lower half to prevent the black smoke belching and chilling from an acrid gunk in my mouth and nose. Raucous laughter, lantern light silhouetted, um, drunken stupor, there are a lot of adjectives here, and I'm not sure you need all of them. Mm -hmm. It's not... It, it, maybe, but I'm not sure. There are certainly enough of them that I begin to get suspicious. Mm -hmm. Um... The fourth paragraph talks a lot about lantern light situated working girls, images of my mother returning home. No doubt girls I'd grown up with were whoring inside. Was one of the silhouettes Davram Alder? I, if our information was correct and he was there. If you're thinking about the guy, why does the previous paragraph talk mostly about the girls? It's a subtle thing, but if you're worried about the guy, you want to have details that focuses on the patrons who get one mention while the girls get three. And it's not that anything is necessarily wrong with either paragraph. It's just that they don't connect entirely to one another. Right. 
The others were out there somewhere. My squad, concealed in college, Gabe and Hal were too adept at hiding unless I really wanted to even. Now, this is again another example of a detail. Is this the place for it? Do you want or do you want to move that upwards? Because the important thing to do is actually establish that he is part of a squad. Right now you do that with the, especially for the watch, so you know he's probably in the watch, but the better way might be to say, you know, dangerous during the day, suicide by night. The others were out there somewhere, my squad concealed in the alleyways and shadows. That's in my opinion, a much stronger way to present the information. How does he do it right there? The, so is that so the, it's is that just more, a question of moving, yeah, like moving that establishing information. The author clearly knows that she wants to establish that the character is in the watch. But right now, she does that with four extraneous words rather than just bringing us right to the point that he is in the watch and the others in his squad are out there. Right. Okay. So, so those are some general thoughts here. There's definitely some strengths in this one. But there's also a lot that, you know, still right. keeps it from, from being entirely successful. Right. Okay. Um, I think that's probably it. Um, yeah, well, thank you so much, Joshua. That was super helpful. Exactly what I was like. Super helpful. Exactly what I was like. Super helpful. Exactly what I was like. Super helpful. Exactly.